Oh, it's a complicated thing that is never just a simple case of black and white. It's natural to have doubts. It's normal to be afraid. But if you've ever had thoughts of joining the other side, report to your local rehabilitation office for a D, a biscuit, and some invasive personality adjustments. What the hell is this guy talking about now, I hear you ask? Well, these are the stories of the bots who've turned their backs on their own. I'm talking about the traders, the turncoats, the defectors, the deserters, also double agents, which are not quite the same thing, and the degenerate porn addict. I'm not even joking. So make sure you're liking, sharing, and subscribing, and all that good stuff, and let Let's start off with G1 and all of the Autobots. Well, all of them except B and Jazz anyway. And it was an involuntary betrayal at the hands of Megatron's personality destabilizer device. Yeah, he sprayed himself with this invisibility spray, snuck into their base, and shoved it in their recharge chambers. And before you know it, they had the red eyes of Eva! Hello. Anyway, while they were being controlled, they wrecked up Teletran 1, they attacked an airbase, they attacked the scientist woman for her blueprints to the satellite that Megatron wanted. Then Hound was about to crush the dumpster she hid in before Jazz interrupted him, so he just picked it up and threw it at him. Prime man slap Bumblebee. And Jetfire blew this military plane out of the sky. As I said, this was all temporary though, and this guy made a device to unbrainwash them. Yeah, I was a little hesitant to add occasions where they were acting against their own wishes, but I threw this one in all the same, because like some of the things that they do, yeah. Yeah, that's better. Octane is an interesting one, and one I don't think I've mentioned on the channel just yet. He was a triple changer that changed into his jet and his truck, and was possibly a porn addict. <laughs> He one day happened to come across the wreckage of Trypticon and brought him back online and used him to negotiate a deal with these guys to get a steady supply of fuel in exchange for their protection. Then he came up with this bizarre scheme to steal all of Earth's monuments to give to his new hosts. Like, you couldn't possibly get a scheme more in the public eye than this. That made Galvatron realize that Octane had been hiding Trypticon, prompting Galvatron to boot him out of the Decepticons, put a bounty on his head, and ordered a whole bunch of assassins to bump him off. Decepticons, commence hunting season! He eventually sought safe haven with the Autobots and made friends with Sandstorm, and the two would frolic and have races and eventually would flee together to a space station, where they literally had no problem evading this bungling idiot. Then they both went back to Cybertron. Sandstorm disappeared, and not like an, oh my god, he's mysteriously vanished, let's hunt him down. It's more like, let's go to Cybertron. And then he just vanished for the most important part, in which Octane then teamed up with Starscream's ghost to help Starscream possess Cyclonus and then take over the Decepticons. Sandstorm and the Aerial Bots did risk it all by trying to get him back when they thought that the sweeps were taking him in, after which Galvatron ordered that he be whipped until he gave up Autobot secrets. You know what? I feel like this is the Decepticons turning on Octane rather than Octane turning on the cons, what with Galvatron making another unhinged decision to go all out and rip him to pieces. When in the grand scheme of things, what he did initially wasn't actually all that bad. And it seems like Galvatron chilled a little and realized this because he was later seen back under Galvatron's command as they attacked the Protector bots in Holland. He was put under the command of Six Shot in the Headmasters and seemed to enjoy the authority he was given whipping the, the Beast Formers into shape. So I guess by this stage, Galvatron had found something else to go nuts about. Did they ever explain why he's always falling over? In Legends World, he got sick of the cons again when Scorponok detonated a black hole. And he traveled to the Legends World universe and opened a... Am I reading this right? He said he opened a pawn shop with Tigertron, and Weinstein tricked Diamond into modeling for him. What? Yeah, you see him here with his little camera. Um, Tigertron there looks quite happy. Tigertron's cat in this one, by the way. Don't quite know what to say about this one. What the fuck? Do what you love, Octane. He worked with the Autobots in the Wings universe during the Machine Wars. In the Marvel comics, he would turn on Megatron when the Decepticons split into two factions, one being under the control of Shockwave, and Octane led the other triple changers into beating Megs and stealing an Energon shipment from him. And the same sort of thing happened in Dreamwave's continuity, where he preferred to work under Shockwave than Megatron. Till, of course, the Dinobots killed him, and Slag seemed to want to keep hold of his skull as a keepsake. Confusingly, in IDW, he was called Tankor for trademark reasons, apparently. And even more confusingly, there were two Tankors, so everyone called him Tall Tanker and the other one Fat Tankor. Yeah, these two even got matching tattoos at one point. He became a neutral when Starscream took over leadership of the cons and stood shoulder to shoulder with the Autobots to defend his favorite bar from Devastator. And he would eventually join 
China's security company run by Ironhide. From Octane Joy, my security company! Then in the 2019 continuity, he found himself being hunted by Spinister. It sounds like he ended up right back where he started. Speaking of Tankle, that was another turnco, because he turned out to be Rhinox in the Beast continuity. Yeah, still a little bit sore about how they made Primal's most trusted lieutenant turn against him like this. Don't forget, he's the one who actually beat Megatron in Beast Wars. But yeah, Beast Machines was interesting. Think fast, heads up! If you want even more traitors and deserters, check out my membership section for the ones that I couldn't fit into this video. That vid includes the tragic story of Wasp, who would go on to become Waspinator. It's kind of heartbreaking. Okay, let's do Thundercracker next. A bot who in many continuities warms to Earth, humans, their pets, and even their televised soap operas. It's most apparent in the IDW continuity where he was a loyal con for millions of years until he started to see that the cons were straying too far from their original goals and becoming something he didn't want to be a part of. He never actually put on the Autobot insignia, but he did refuse to wear the Decepticon one. He first expressed reservations when ordered to destroy a ship of Cybertron's elite, but Skywarp just told him not to think and just do it. Do it. And he did. He didn't like Bludgeon's idea of strapping young Orion Pax to a rocket and firing it into the nearest civilian town. And you know what? I spoke about Thundercracker plenty in my most noble deeds of the Decepticons vid. I'll put a link to that up there somewhere if you want more on him. Kill them all! Impactor started out as a Decepticon in War for Cybertron Siege. Yeah, he chose to follow Megatron after he saw the corruption of the ruling class and associated it with the Autobots. Pretty much blue cog in half and tried to harpoon Optimus in the eye. Maybe. Who knows where this shot was going before getting captured. Megatron was clearly dismayed to lose such a valued soldier. In this one, he was so closely associated with the cons that he was the perfect figurehead for Megatron to use to brew anti-Autobot resentment. Anyway, he was patched up by Ratchet and started working as his assistant, slowly getting to know many of the Autobot wounded. He would later say that he lamented Megatron's turn to abject tyranny, believing that the Megatron he knew would never have gone this far before having to help the Autobots fight off a Decepticon attack, pushing Ratchet out of the way of a laser blast, taking the shot himself, and saving the medic's life at the cost of his own. Drift's name wasn't always Drift. It was once Deadlock. Bam! If that sounds like a scary name, ah! because he was a Decepticon, a murderous one. He actually started out as a homeless bot living on the streets with his buddy Gasket. Now, long story short, Gasket was killed by Autobot law enforcement. Police brutality! Bot lives matter. Drift picks up the nearest blaster and kill them all. He trained as an assassin with members of the Cybertron underground before beginning to attend Megatron's rallies as the Decepticon movement began to take shape. Megatron heard of his prowess and battle skills and asked him to join the cause and rechristened him to the more con-appropriate name Deadlock. His reputation only grew as a cold, merciless killing machine working under the command of a bot called Turmoil, who I'll get into more in a later vid. Anyway, Turmoil's methods weren't aggressive enough for Deadlock, who ordered an attack on Autobot positions even though he was told to hold. And he was a proper Decepticon, you know? He wouldn't allow them to retreat, he was executing people, blowing people to pieces, and then when this guy questioned him on it, blew his head off. So obviously Turmoil found out about it and threatened to put him into stasis, so he went on the run. Whilst on the run, he got marooned on this planet, and whilst searching for a ship, met a bot called Wing. Wing said that he could get him a ship if, here we go, Drift helped free some slaves. Deadlock agreed, and although he tried abandoning Wing at the first chance he got and running away with the ship, Wing still helped him when he got injured. As he was being repaired, Wing explained to him that they were the Circle of Light, a group of Cybertronian scholars and scientists who abandoned the planet during the early days of the war in order to find peace and preserve Cybertron's culture, including some ancient methods of combat which he started to teach to Deadlock. Of course, in good old-fashioned samurai movie tradition, the Decepticons showed up again and Deadlock went back to his original name, Drift, and chose to defend the pacifists against them. He was instrumental in getting Diet Atlas to join the fight against the cons, and when Wing was killed by a con called Braid, he learned to use Wing's great sword to get revenge. A great sword was this blade that would use the wield of spark energy to become even more powerful. So yeah, it's a proper samurai story, this. Anyway, after this, he set off across the galaxy, you know, like Kane in Kung Fu, trying to free any enslaved Autobots and trying to make whatever difference he could in the war. Cup eventually invited him to join his team as an Autobot. He made really good friends with Perceptor and Blur, but obviously had to live with a lot of the suspicion that previously being a con would bring. I'm guessing they didn't know quite how bad he was when he was a con. Anyway, this one time they were out on a mission, somehow their ship's computer codes got hacked. So not only did they get ambushed by a bunch of con ships, their shields mysteriously dropped as well. I smell another traitor. But this whole thing forced them to crash land and to get stranded on another planet. He would later run into Thundercracker, who called him a traitor, which I thought was pretty rich coming from him. 
and Ultra Magnus never fully trusted him. Anyway, eventually he went off with Rodimus on the Lost Light adventure to find the Knights of Cybertron, which I won't go into much here, but suffice to say that he became one of Hot Rod's most trusted and would even become Kojunk's endurer with Ratchet, with the two of them growing old together until Ratchet died of old age. Ah. Farmer went the other way, starting out as an Autobot and developing into a particularly nasty piece of work. He attended Robo Med School with Ratchet until their paths took them separate ways and landed Farmer at a medical facility called Delphi. Now, Delphi was deep in con territory, so Farmer had to get creative as he had to deal with the likes of Tarn and the DJD on a daily. What did Tarn want? Transformation cogs, and lots of them. So, because Tarn was a little too fond of Super Energon, he would burn through these at a rate of knots. We needed to replace them on the reg. Farmer had access to all the T-Cods he would ever need, trouble being that they were inside his patients. So, he started out by extracting them from the dead patients, but when that supply ran out, he quickly started making his own patients dead so that they qualified. So, caught between the DJD and Autobot High Command, who, who would have probably marooned him on a space rock somewhere if they found out what he was doing. He tried to cover everything up by having Delphi closed down, and he'd do that by releasing a lovely plague. Wonderful! He would end up by torturing former friend Ratchet in such a horrible way. It must be one of the worst things I've seen in all of Transformers. But you know what? I did a vid called Worst Deeds of the Autobots that gets into the nitty gritty of that. But in short, Farmer, rather than being a blatant turncoat, was more of a bot that went rogue, losing his grip on reality and finding himself kind of in between the factions. I will leave him on this list because he did help the DJD quite a bit though. So whilst G1 Skyfire wasn't technically a traitor, even though he was good friends with Starscream before the war, once he saw what Starscream had become after he awoke on Earth, he chose the path of the Autobots in response. Technically not a traitor. IDW Jetfire though did initially join the cons when the ruling class repeatedly showed a disdain for bots with aerial alt modes, even ones with brilliant scientific minds like his. But after Zeta Prime was killed by Megatron, Jetfire saw the Autobots' new direction, as well as the increasing brutality of the cons, so joined up with them to become one of their most renowned scientists. Same goes for his War for Cybertron incarnation, where he was leader of the Seekers. In this one, he wasn't friends with Starscream like in the other continuities, with Jetfire finding Starscream more of an irritation than anything else cutting his hand off when Starscream said he was going to engage the enemy without permission. Finding many of their actions to be without honor, he butted heads not just with Starscream, but with the rest of the Seekers. And Megatron's plan to annihilate every single one of the Autobots it caused him to eventually shoot Skywarp in the back, forcing Megatron to denounce him and paint him as an enemy. Jetfire took refuge with the Autobots and the rest is history. And as you'd expect, the Autobots didn't trust him and he had to agree to have a device implanted in his head that would detonate his brain module by remote control if he betrayed them. He gave the Autobots a route through the Sea of Rust and helped them battle the Sparkless, giving them intel on how they got that way in the first place. He had no second thoughts about battling his former allies and really seemed to relish a chance to get back at Starscream. The next time you see him, He's gone the whole hog and put on an Autobot Insignia and was a big part of the mission to free Autobot POWs, even single-handedly defeating all of the Seekers. Anyway, in this storyline, he would stay behind on Cybertron after the Ark left and died along with Elita One and all of those guys. Sunder's another Autobot who went mental, but because he didn't actually turn to the Decepticons, doesn't really belong on this list. Although, the things he did are way worse than the actions of even the cons. Same applies to Getaway, I guess. Definitely went against the Autobots, but didn't really collude with the cons as far as I can remember anyway. Check out this vid if you want more deets on them. Dealer was one of Hot Rod's crew in the IDW continuity as they searched for an artifact called the Magnificent. But he turned out to be an undercover con working for Banzaitron. He sabotaged their mission and set them up to be ambushed, and Hot Rod's whole team was killed as a result. He manipulated Hot Rod into thinking they were really good friends, and was so convincing that even Banzaitron thought he'd become an Autobot and gave him the name Double Dealer. Luckily, Hot Rod got suspicious before Double Dealer could shoot him in the back and run off with the Magnificent, and Hot Rod shot him in the chest, causing him to fall off a cliff and get smushed to bits at the bottom. Knockout tried to defect to the Autobots towards the end of Transformers Prime. What? I'm joining the winning team. They threw him in jail though. <laughs> Although he did give Bumblebee and Co. the location of a map to Shockwave's lab in Predacons Rising. And later, he turned on Starscream and beat him with the immobilizer device. Now, will you believe I'm joining the winning team? Not a traitor now, but a double agent. The difference being, double agents stay loyal to their original cause. There was an Autobot called Punch, whose undercover double agent Donnie Brasco skills are so great that he even has a second robot mode called Counter Punch. Yeah, according to Of Masters and Mayhem, he has a rare T-Cog that was like one in a trillion. This double life and bouncing between kindly Autobot and violent con has caused a kind of personality schism. Paranoia swamps his circuitry. Everywhere he looks, he sees double agents, apparently. 
In Transformers 84, he had to commit atrocities against his fellow Autobots just to maintain cover. And it was his intel that duped Megatron into attacking the Ark in a bid to trap the cons on Earth. But all that said, he's always been loyal to Optimus at his core. Where this gets even more confusing is in Shattered Glass, where, where I guess he was a Decepticon pretending to be an Autobot, but then the Decepticons are good? Or is he an evil Autobot pretending to be a good Decepticon? Oh, fuck it. Let's do one that isn't Decepticon or Autobot now. One who plays both factions against each other for the benefit of his master, Unicron. I am, of course, talking about Sidewaves, who with his two Minicons, Rook and Crosswise, will flip between factions at the drop of a hat. Of course, there was that pivotal moment in the IDW continuity where Megatron donned the Autobot badge. Because Shockwave was on the verge of collapsing the whole universe into a black hole and was super amped by the power of the dead universe as well as all the ores that he'd been cultivating, Megatron couldn't beat him in battle. And when Shockwave killed Bumblebee, whom Megatron had a newfound respect for, Megatron took Bee's insignia and put it on his chest confusing Shockwave long enough to force him to lose control of all the powers flowing through him, releasing his old self from before he'd undergone shadow play and allowed Megs and OP to kill him. After this though, Megs was put on a five month public trial where he would plead guilty to crimes against the species before requesting to be judged by the long lost Knights of Cybertron. And because of the laws of this particular moon that the trial was taking place on, they had to grant his wish and he agreed to go on the lost light to find the Knights. Before he did though, he read out a pre-written speech denouncing the, the Decepticon cause. Words you could tell he didn't fully believe in and hurt him to have to say. On the Lost Light, he was only allowed to consume a weaker form of Energon called Fool's Energon to keep him weak as he was given the co-captaincy of the Lost Light with Hot Rod. So they just wanted to make sure he didn't go crazy and kill everyone. Of course, there was Earthspark Megatron who came to see Terrans as the symbol of what he had originally planned for the Cybertronian race. So he started collaborating with Optimus and Earth Outfit Ghost to steer them away from the same path that had led the Decepticons to becoming what they did. A big part of his realization was his friendship with Dot Malto, which prompted him to side with Optimus and ask him to change his alt mode to a human helicopter to rescue a bunch of humans before stealing the Allspark from Shockwave before he could use it to create a new Decepticon army. When the Allspark was destroyed and, and took a space bridge with it, he set about repairing any damage that had happened in the, in the Decepticons attack. Anyway, there's loads more to say about the various incarnations of Megatron, but I've got a spotlight video planned just for him, so I'll keep some back for that. Okay, quick shout out to the members. You guys be rocking as usual. With your help, I can spend more time on these silly little videos and try to give you the odd extra silly little video in return. I've just started doing cross continuity matchups on there, like the last one I did with Skylinks versus Deathsaurus. I was also thinking of starting a collection of the worst Transformers toys ever made, but I'll definitely need some input from you guys before I start doing that one. All right, plug over. <sighs> So who else we got? Well, Soundwave walked the line quite often and often did things that were characteristically more Autobot than Con. But again, check out this vid for more on that. And the same applies to Bayver Sentinel, who got this vid dedicated just to him. I don't know if you'd count Prime's short defection in Transformers Prime as a blast of energy made him revert to Orion Pax and losing all of his memories of being Prime. Megatron then manipulated him into believing that the Autobots were evil, he got the con insignia, but it was definitely Megatron taking advantage of a situation rather than Prime willingly defecting. So, uh, I don't think I'm going to count this one. The one I really want to go into is Sunstreaker. In most continuities, he's a bot whose arrogant tendencies are tolerated because he's a very effective fighter. But IDW put him in the middle of this storyline that saw him nearly swing the balance of the entire war away from his own faction. So basically, he got kidnapped and brutalized by the Machination, a human outfit looking to create Sunstreaker clones. They used Headmaster Tech to put a human operator at the helm of each bot. On top of this, every single clone was networked together into the original Sunstreaker's head, which might have sent him a little bit crazy. To the point, that he begged for death. Long story short, his human partner Hunter Onion, oh, Onion, look, look at that, Onion, woo, helped him escape by becoming his headmaster, but Sunstreaker hated having to share his beautiful mind with a stinky human, so he began hating all of humanity. He must have seen some weird stuff in Hunter's head. Again, long story short, he made a deal with Starscream that if all went well, would have the Autobots go back to Cybertron and Starscream usurp Megzi and take rule of Earth. Sunstreaker agreed, but only if Starscream would exterminate all of the humans on Earth. So Sunstreaker set up an ambush and handed over the shield codes for various Autobot ships. But of course, the plan went awry and ended with the ship marooned, Prime in stasis lock and out of action, and the Autobots slowly turning on each other as they tried to find out who the traitor was. Einhide even beating the living tea leaves out of Mirage, believing him 
to be the culprit. Sunstreaker would redeem himself by laying down his life to fight the Insecticon Swarm. Not the true death, but all the same. But I really feel that this is one of the worst treasons in all of Transformers. Six Shot would become Great Shot with the help of a little retconning. So towards the end of Headmasters, Six Shot ended up becoming friends with Daniel Witwicky. Uncle Six Shot! Did he just call him Uncle Six Shot? Then Six Shot would kind of fall out with leader Scorponok and swore to never work with the Decepticons again. Then, jump forward to Transformers Victory, you had this other bot called Great Shot who teamed up with Star Saber to take down Blue Bacchus and Black Shadow. And long story short, they retconned in that this was the same character all along who at some point received a new body. So if you put the whole arc together, he went from Con to Neutral to Autobot and then back to Neutral, I think. Blaze Master was a Micro Master that started off as a Con but walked out when Venom made some prisoners fight each other to the death. Venom ordered that he be blown out of the sky as a punishment, but Blaze Master would soon get his revenge, stabbing him up good with his rotors. He would go on to join the Autobot Air Patrol, but never lost some of his Con traits. For example, his love of hovering over, watching victims slowly melt after it just dropped a load of napalm on them. Yeesh. I just recently spoke about how Elita 1 became Black Arachnia in Transformers Animated, and there was also Clobber in Cyberverse, who, if I remember correctly, had been forced into joining the cons in the first place. But she eventually ended up teaming up with Hot Rod and Perceptor. <sighs> There was a cameo bot called Crankshot in IDW, who started out as a con prison officer before defecting to become an Autobot prison officer. <sighs> Paycheck to paycheck, I guess. Here's one I've never heard of before, Crystal Widow, who kind of sounds like a black arachnia recolor, basically. But a more interesting one is Diabla from the Bumblebee comics, a grapple hook wielding double agent who chose to reveal that she was in fact a con to her good friend Bumblebee, who obviously thought she was a loyal Autobot. Bumblebee had to fight his former friend and might even have held back a little when she had to force him to retreat into the River Thames. Diabla would eventually see the light and turn on her commanding officer Blitzwing before being caught in the blast of an exploding rocket. And Bumblebee believed her to have survived the explosion and searched for her for many, many years, but never found her. Obviously, Dinobot is probably one of the most famous side swappers in all of Transformers, again, having a problem with the lack of nobility in the con's actions, an ethos that he would stick to to the point of laying down his life not once, but twice. Actually, three times, because Code of Hero, then Dinobot 2's death, and then Kingdom. That bot that turned into the DeLorean in the Back to the Future crossover comics was formerly a con too, but he was basically too nice, basically, yeah. He worked as a statistician before watching Megatron enslaving humanity after murdering Optimus Prime, before realizing something had to be done and scanning the DeLorean and adopting it as his alt mode, and then traveling back through time to set the timeline right again. One that went from Autobot to Decepticon. Some I don't like the, the flinch was Mudflap in Transformers Cybertron. He never trust the French. Who got annoyed with having to pander to humans on Earth. What's with these humans anyway? They are one bunch of disorderly cats, huh? And when he was on the verge of losing a battle to Thundercracker, Starscream stepped in, stopped him from being killed, and offered him a place on Team Con. He was like, yes, please, fuck you, monkey people. Skywarp joined the Wreckers once. Yeah, I was surprised about that too. It was in the 3H comics in the Beast Wars universe, and Skywarp was one of the few to escape Beast Megatron's transformation lock virus, which allowed him to take over the planet. So as a last refuge, he and Cyclonus actually joined up with Ape Lincoln Co. as the whole outfit became a mixture of both Autobots and Decepticons. Not sure if this was actually treason, because, because after Megatron took over, all of the battle lines had to be redrawn, and all of the lineups in all of the factions had to be reshuffled. Skywarp would also join up with the G.I. Joe guys in the IDW continuity. It wasn't really a willing thing, it was more to get his body repaired and get his powers of teleportation back. IDW mentioned that Grimlock was reported to have defected to the cons, which was chalked up to his natural distrust for authority. But I couldn't really find any further detail on the hows and whys. When he returned to the Autobots though, Megatron was reportedly furious about losing such a powerful combatant and sick the DJD on his grey ass. Grimmy also aligned himself with Scorponok for a while to get new body for his Dinobots. Perceptor was also involved in this whole storyline, seemingly helping Scorponok build this massive doomsday weapon that would kill all the Autobots. Again, more mind control than willing defection, and they both turned out to be good guys the whole time. Yippee. Back to IDW though, he fell in with the Decepticon group called the Scavengers at one point. I am still planning to do a video about when bots teamed up, and I think that's more of a team up than a betrayal, so I think the whole Scavengers thing is more relevant there. 
He fought against the Autobots in Earthspark as well. Again, not a willing defection, but a mind control situation that happened when Mandroid put a cognitive control badge on him. Even after he was freed from that, he would get flashback that triggered a rampage until Jawbreaker was able to take him down. I'm absolutely certain there were more Grimlock defections than this, but right now, for the life of me, I can't find them. You guys know what to do. And you didn't think I'd forgotten about this guy, did you? This guy is the backstabber in chief. He tried to convince Soundwave to pull the plug on Megatron in Prime. He offered Megatron the cyber keys as a peace offering, all while plotting to use them to take over Cybertron and rule it himself. But you know what? Starscream really needs his own video. And believe me, it is going to be epic. We'll go over the time he was a giant screaming head, the time he combined into Megascreen, the time he absorbed all the knowledge in the universe. So make sure you're all subscribed for that. Make sure you're letting me know about any that I've forgotten in the comments below, and make sure you're letting me know which cross-continuity matchups you want to see. I think next up, I'm going to have to do Greatest Rivalries Part 2, because there seems to be quite a few that I've got there. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for all of your support of the channel, and I will see you very soon for the next one. Thanks again for watching, and cheerio, bye!